Today we are looking at what I call the ideal marriage. I will start with the song. I am the victory, hallelujah. I am the victory, hallelujah. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. His Lord, His Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. His Lord, His Lord. Of course, uh, when you are a leader in the church, you are supposed to have an ideal marriage. And we see this in Paul writing to the young pastor Timothy in 3 verse 2, 1 Timothy. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, temperate, sober-minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach. And then, of course, it goes on to talk about what is expected of, you know, how he's supposed to rule his own home, the wife being in submission, um, the children, you know, uh, also, you know, being godly children, uh, because if he's not able to demonstrate this at home, how would he be able to lead uh, the church of God? <laughs> but sometimes the practicalities can be a bit daunting. I recall a friend who used to tell me that every time he goes back home, the mother will, you know, uh, take him to the side and begin to tell him, you know, uh, a litany of things that the father had done wrong. And he used to listen to the mother until he got married. And then the mother wanted to do the same thing. And he said, ah, I'm not interested. You women are the same. <laughs> so basically where we're going is that there is really no ideal marriage. Uh, God is the one helping everybody out. And if I'm part of the reason why your marriage becomes ideal is when the children are old enough to begin to help you in resolving their issues. And look on the bright side, this will also help them so that when they have marital issues in the future, they already have some experiences in resolving issues for mom and dad. You know, but another bright side that you can look at is at least you can avoid the complications in the world. You might think that maybe the issues you have with your wife is big, but look at those that are not believers and the kinds of things that they go through. Somebody will divorce, remarry, and then begin to have an affair with his ex-wife. So you just commit your marriage into God's hands. No marriage is ideal, but God is the one helping all of us, and God will help us to have exemplary homes that will bring glory to his name.